Jeffrey Santelli there. Springing our first guest, Rob Luna is back with us, CEO and Chief Investment Strategist at Shervis, which is a CI financial company live out of Newport Beach in California. Rob, good to see you and appreciate your time. Hope you're keeping safe where you are. If this were a game, uh, right, this would be halftime right now, right? Everybody's in the <laughs> locker room and hanging their heads. And, uh, oh. you know, the coach is going, okay, so blowout first half. Worst since 1970. But remember, guys, back then, what happened in the second half? We came back and came back strong, is what you're pointing to. The S&P, for example, in that year returned more than 26% in the second half. My, my question to you is, today and back then, are the conditions the same? And, and how likely is this kind of a, a huge comeback in the second half? Well, I, I, it's definitely halftime. It's definitely time for a rally talk because there's a lot of pessimism uh, out there right now, Martin. And similar to what we saw um, back then, down 21%, we're very close to that, about 19 and a half on the S&P 500. The news out there is super negative. If you look at the 200-day moving average, we had about 90% of stocks just a week ago trading below that. That's exactly the same number we saw during the dot-com bust. You look at brokerage firms, they're reporting record amounts of money on the sideline. This is all a recipe to me for a market rally at some point. However, uh, what's always a little bit different in a market is the current situation. We have inflation that is still yet to be under control and we have a Fed that is raising interest rates out there. We have S&P earnings that have still not been brought down enough by analysts and we're gonna start seeing CEOs talking about, CFOs talking about in the next couple of weeks. So I do think there's gonna be some challenges. I can't tell you whether or not we're gonna be up 25, 26%, but I can tell you this, if you are one of those people who have money that's sitting on the sideline, if you look at where valuations are today and if you look at some of the statistics in terms of where we've been at previous market bottoms, we do think now is time to start putting some money into this market. All right, maybe dollar cost averaging in. I, I get you, but I mean the the fear, the worry, the risk of catching a falling knife here. Because I know you're looking for triggers like the VIX spiking and also earnings coming out even further to sort of confirm that we are bottoming. Ing yeah. uh, something that is a, a, in process. But at the same time, what what is the risk that even if the number of stocks on the S and P 500 now uh, below their 200 DMA are roughly similar to what we saw at the bottom of the the dot com bottom rather. I don't know, yeah. could, could things be even worse this time? Yeah, well, look, there, there's nobody who's gonna ring a bell at the bottom, Martin, as you know, and say it's time to get in now, we've finally hit a bottom. So you just mentioned dollar cost averaging, which I think is really the prudent strategy right here. Meaning if you've got $10,000 that you're putting into the market, wouldn't necessarily do it today. I'd probably be putting at least a third of that money into the market though. So one other point of data that we've looked at at previous recessions, if you look at where we believe interest rates could potentially head on the 10 year high threes, maybe 4%. In terms of the multiple compressing, the number that we come up with on the S&P 500 is about 3,250. So while we are starting to get bullish, that is still another 13 to 15% downside from here, which is why we're recommending dollar cost averaging. And if you are somebody who cannot tolerate that, if it's money that cannot stand to go down, 10 to 15 percent you shouldn't be putting it to work yeah. because that is a possibility and if we continue to get hawkish comments out of the fed if we continue to get high data uh sorry hot data coming out on inflation once we're going to start seeing and we know it's coming a uh, ceo's talking down uh pr pr potential you know third fourth quarter earnings we could uh see that the market test that 3250 3300 level in our view all right, uh, fair enough. Uh, Rob, break down for us. Four stocks that I know you like. You've got Disney, Adiz, Meta, S-Bucks, also CrowdStrike. Talk us through the case or the story for, for each of them. Yeah, um, so at, at this point in time, you know, as I mentioned, I think it's going to be a stock picker's market. There's some stocks that have actually held up really well and are pretty expensive. You look at a company like Procter & Gamble, Chevron, trading at you know five-year highs in terms of their valuation. So those haven't been hit. I'm trying to look at good companies who are gonna be around for a very long time, who have great management, have a competitive advantage, but have been sold off 40, 50%. I really like the technology and consumer discretionary area. I think those will be the first to lead us out of recession. Those are the two sectors that got hit the hardest. Disney right now, trading at about 18 times earnings, we hadn't seen it trade that low uh, since COVID. It has not you know, hit that 18 times forward earnings. 
Stock's down about 40, 45%. Disney's not going anywhere. I think it's a great addition to portfolios. Meta, uh, Metaverse, I think this company is gonna continue to grow 25, 26% top line when you can find a company that's growing double digits during a recession which i believe we're either in or headed into those are companies that you want to own and look it's only trading at 12 times forward earnings so a lot of the bad news is being priced into that company crowdstrike i believe is going to be able to continue to grow 50 55 percent in this environment why Cybersecurity is becoming a bigger and bigger issue with companies. If there is a recession, if the economy is going to slow down, we see what they do. They lay people off. They don't let go of technology and they most definitely don't put their consumers data at risk. So CrowdStrike, I believe, will uh, continue to, to gain uh, a competitive advantage. Oh, oh finally, yeah. Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I know, look, you, you think it's good value, trading about 23 times below a five-year average of 27. If and when China yeah. really opens up, it's going to be a nice tailwind for S bucks. But to this theme of high inflation hurting the consumer, I don't know what the average cost is uh, of a cup of coffee uh, at, a, at an S bucks now. I know how much a yeah. gallon of gas is. What is the likelihood that folks, consumers, are more likely to go, my God? whatever it is, seven, eight bucks a cup. I, I'll, I'm gonna stay home or, or go to the pantry and make, my, make myself a cup of instant coffee. Yeah, well, you know, look, I think a lot of that and that, that thought process is, is correct. But if you look at the price of Starbucks and how bad it's gotten beaten up, it was trading at about 120 at the beginning of the year, it's 76 now. And that's, you know, the thing, Martin, about this market in general, what's very hard for retail investors to understand is when the news is the worst, is usually where you'll see the stock bottoming. So everything you mentioned, exactly right. That's why the stock's been almost cut in half. China is a huge uh, catalyst. And as it starts to reopen, lessen the COVID restrictions, we think that will be a tailwind. We have a lot of clients just over the last month. It is now the time to play China. What we are recommending, instead of going directly into China, starting focusing on the Apples, the Starbucks, the companies that will benefit from a stronger consumer in China, like Starbucks. All right, gotcha. Rob, listen, great to talk to you as always. Thank you for the time. You keep safe where you are. We'll do it again very soon. Rob Luna there from SureVest joining us live.